since 86. And with an improved defense, they're talking Super Bowl. When you think of great scrambling quarterbacks in the NFL, there are none better than John Elway and the amazing Randall Cunningham. As it almost always is, Mile High Stadium is sold out today for only the sixth meeting ever between the Philadelphia Eagles of the NFC Eastern Division and the Denver Broncos of the AFC West. A touch of winter has hit the Mile High City. We've dropped to 41 degrees after a high of 61 yesterday. A breeze out of the northwest at 20 to 30 miles per hour. The wind chill currently at 20 degrees. At one point, they said two to four inches of snow this afternoon. We've been lucky so far. We'll see. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, and welcome to Mile High. More so than in a normal game, the spotlight today focuses on two of the bright young quarterbacks in the league, John Elway, Randall Cunningham, but both have been struggling. My partner, Terry Bradshaw. Terry, what accounts for the struggle that both these young kids are going through? Well, first of all, thank goodness that they're winning. Can you imagine being a quarterback in Philadelphia or Denver and, and losing these games and, and they're winning and catching heck for it? Uh, I think it's, after looking at it very carefully, Vern, I, I really believe that both Elway and Cunningham are having a hard time and a transition from where they are the focal point of the offense, throw it 40, 50 times a game, to now where their coaches are saying, we're going to force feed you the running game. And they're forcing their normal attitude is to attack and be aggressive, is now to be very submissive and run the running attack and mix in the play action and throw the safe passes. Also, both of these kids have thrown a lot of interceptions, a lot of turnovers, and both coaches feel like the running game will stop that. So they're having a hard time, I believe, adjusting to the running game. The Denver Broncos offensive line has been touched by injury. Keith Carts will start at center today, but he's hobbled. And one of his problems is he's going to get to meet up with Reggie White. <laughs> I think you fans are going to enjoy number 92, Reggie White of the Philadelphia Eagles. The one thing that the Eagles like to do is to put Reggie White over the center. They do that twice. They'll do it in normal situations because they think that White is a mismatch for the center Carts. Carts has a bad left ankle. He may start this game, but he may only play one series of downs. Mike Ruther will come in, a man that was cut, then brought back when Carts was injured. And then if he's in there, we'll see Reggie White go over the center for him. He loves to pressure up the middle. Today, very important, the centers of the Broncos block well. It could be very hard to do. First time the two teams have met here since 1983. As we said, it's the sixth time the two teams have met. Philadelphia leads the series three games to two. David Treadwell will kick off as Philadelphia won the toss. And Mark Higgs and Heath Sherman are deep to return it. There is Heath Sherman, the rookie from Texas A&I. And there is Mark Higgs, number 22. Treadwell to kick, mile high sold out for the 150th consecutive game in which non-striking teams are involved. Script kick. David Little lets it go by, and it goes right by Heath Sherman. He can't control it. Eagles start from their own three and a half. Randall Cunningham with only 64 yards last week. Lowest game as a starter since 85. Offensive line, Matt Darwin, Mike Shad. Ron sold, of course, back in the lineup now. And Keith Jackson will start, but he's hobbled by injuries. Byers, Tony, Johnson, and Carter. And on passing downs, it's Garrity and Henry Williams. Keith Byers for a couple out to the seven. The Denver defense under first-year defensive coordinator Wade Key. Carriker, Craigan, and Ron Holmes will start up front. And the linebackers, Brooks, Dennison, Mecklenburg, and Simon Fletcher. And the defensive secondary, Braxton and Henderson. Steve Atwater and Dennis Smith is having an all-pro year on passing downs. Denver goes to seven defensive backs. Here's the handoff up the middle again. Anthony Tony out near the 15-yard line. Tony, the uh, fullback out of 
Texas A&M. And that's good enough for a first down, so they get it out to the 16-yard line. Yeah, one of the things that Wade Phillips, when he came to Denver, one of his first priorities in putting in this defense was he felt that the number one priority for Denver was to be able to stop the run. And so far, Philadelphia is moving the ball very well. Running. Snap. The handoff. Fires. Mark Munford can't make the tackle. Wyman Henderson and Dennis Smith finally bring Byers down, but he's out to the 29-yard line. There's a young man who came in as a number one draft choice with a foot problem out of Ohio State and has become a pass receiving specialist. And yet, Buddy Ryan said yesterday, I promise you, he insists that if we give this man the ball 25 times a game, he would be an outstanding running That's back. That's exactly right. Byers, they found out, was an excellent pass receiver. And so, therefore, because of the Eagle offensive game plan, which was to throw with Cunningham, they found out he could catch it. And that's what they've really been doing, is using it to run pass routes. They'll try Tony. Big hole. And Tony rips. Now he's knocked backwards, but his forward progress will carry him to the 36. Dennis Smith. Now a flag is down. Smith made the tackle. Jim Tunney is the referee today. One of the things you'll see, Vern, is Tunney waiting on you, Jim. One of the things you will see running against a 3-4, most teams will attack between the tackles. Very seldom will the teams one ride, one run wide because of the pursuit of the linebackers. Personal foul, Philadelphia. Number 79, after the play was dead, unnecessary roughness, it'll be second down. Second down. That's Mike Shad on the dead ball foul, second down. One of the thing, one of the reasons that the offense has changed for the Eagles is turnovers. And you look at the first four games, 39% run as opposed to 58% pass. And now how it's changed drastically in the last three games. Second and 18. And another flag. Looks like they're going backwards now, Vern. Encouragement, 56, five yards. That's Michael Brooks, strong side, outside linebacker. And it'll make it a second down and 13. Danny Reeves now in his ninth year as the head coach. Teams always come out with their best running plays. These are the best running plays the Eagles have. I expect the Broncos will stop them on the second series of trying to run the same plays. Second, 13, split back, draw play. Myers. And he's out to the 34-yard line before Steve Atwater, number 27, the rookie out of Arkansas, makes the tackle. A different play. Now we saw the draw where Cunningham pretended that he was going to throw the ball, then he handed it to Byers on the draw, but the running lanes are up inside. Once again, folks, no one is running wide on the Broncos. Notice Byers slides over, gets the ball. It's a draw. It makes it, the idea is to make it look as, as though it's a pass, then hand off to the surprise back for the run. On third and five, four wide receivers, no blitz by the Broncos. Cunningham out of the grasp of a potential tackler. That's Fletcher chasing him. Randall gets a heck of a block from Tony and is out of bounds for the first down. He got a superb block from Anthony Tony. Oh, this is going to make Wade Phillips furious. Number 27 is Steve Atwater. He is the starting free safety. In the nickel situation, the Broncos will come in with seven defensive backs, and Atwater, 27's responsibility is to cover Randall Cunningham, to spy him. Folks, watch this great effort by Cunningham, but notice at the end, 27 got caught inside, allowing Cunningham outside. A terrible play by Atwater, especially when he was there to spy on Cunningham. That is a 24-yard gain, longest run of the year against the Broncos. The handoff to Tony. Boy, they are running and running well. That's a nine-yard gain and maybe ten. Only the third time this year, Terry, that a, that a running back or, or that a team has had a run of longer than 20. 
against Denver, and the previous long was by Bernie Kozar, which you wouldn't expect. Well, last week's game, uh, Seattle exposed the inside backers to the running attack, and these Eagles saw that game. Seattle rushed for 139 yards, Vern, and now we're seeing the Eagles run. Everything is directly up the middle. That was Ted Plum, the offensive coordinator on the sideline, second down and two. This is the opening series of the game, and Philadelphia has gotten it all on the ground. Cut back, Keith Byers, and he's down near the 31-yard line. Randall Cunningham, by the way, climbs up the list of top 10 running backs in the league. He's now passed Steve Grogan, and that was a 24-yarder that got them the first down a moment ago. Well, as his career continues on, and a brilliant career he has going for himself, Vern, those numbers will not impress himself later on. He'll quit doing that. I've often said that it, and listen, I'm not saying this to happen, but it takes an injury or it takes maturity as, as a cunning, as a player, as a quarterback, for him to stop doing that. Eventually, he will. See, I got those 32 touchdowns and <laughs> average rushing in the first five years. I don't think I scored a touchdown after that. No kidding. Well, Cunningham with a 6.9 yard Amazing. per carry average. And Mr. Bradshaw with 32 touchdowns. Yeah, I like that. That looks good. It does look good. That's a first down. Ted Plum, the offensive coordinator that we had a shot of a while ago, is, was criticized a little bit by Cunningham. He, not directly at Ted, but when the reporters asked him last week about the game and what's wrong with their offense, there's Ted Plum. Randall Cunningham kind of let it out. The, I wish we would throw more play action passes and I wish we'd do this. And Ted Plum, I'm sure, is saying, I wish you wouldn't say those things. We'll work this out between the two of us. Impressive drive to open the ball game for the Eagles. They come in with a five and two mark, chasing the New York Giants. And that play is stuffed on first down. Now the, the Eagles are running inside, but what has happened, Vern, is that the ends of the of the Broncos and the nose tackle are now stunning. They're slanting, and when you slant your lineman, the blockers do not have a direct block on you. Now they're slanting and pinching their linebackers up, and so now they have shut down the inside running game. Now's the time to play action. Now's the time to go wide. This will be the tenth play of the drive. The previous nine have been runs. Second down and eight. Tony with Heller in front. And another impressive run. Anthony Tony a little slow getting back to his feet. And wide. Welcome those of you who've been watching the New Orleans Atlanta game as the Saints win it over Atlanta down in the Bayou City 20 to 13. We are scoreless here in the Mile High City. The Philadelphia Eagles have taken the opening kickoff, which uh, a drive which started at their own three-yard line and running on every play. They have run for 10 consecutive times. They now have a first down at the Denver Bronco 22-yard line. Largest play in this drive, a 24-yard scamper by Randall Cunningham. Yeah, last week, you know, these Eagles had eight drives of less than 25 yards, Vern. And so for this, for them to come out with an opening drive in, in terrible field position says a lot for their game plan. Buddy Ryan said yesterday, the team that runs the ball best today will win. There's Byers on first down, and he's inside the 20 near the 18-yard line. Well, for those that just joined us, everything that the Eagles have done running-wise has been up the middle. That's how they got as far as they got, except for the 24-yard scramble by Cunningham. And now they're trying to run up inside. And once again, I don't think they're going to be successful doing it. I think they're going to have to come back out wide. They went, ran one little counter trap and picked up seven or eight yards, and I think inside's no good. Now you have to go wider and throw the ball. Second down and seven. No score. Opening drive of the game. They still run it. Mark Higgs, the 5'7", 200-pounder, dances to the outside and is knocked out of bounds with a third down play forthcoming at the 16-yard line. This, of course, is the eighth game of 1989. The Broncos come in with a 6-1 and one record. And of their seven previous opponents, Terry, they have held five of those opponents to less than 95 yards in the ground. And Philadelphia is about to get 95 on this opening drive on the ground. Well, I think a lot of it is, is a surprise. Uh, top of this telecast, the thing that's been, that we talked about was Cunningham and Elway having to adjust to a running offense, to understanding the running game. And I would say that Cunningham has certainly learned a lot on this drive. Third and four. And again they run. It's Byers. Touchdown, Philadelphia.
accomplish what only two other foes have accomplished. Rushed for more than 95 yards. Well, this is a draw trap. Notice that left tackle Darwin is pulling out. Ted Plum told us, he said that one of the things that will happen is that this Denver team will be more patient with their defense than we will with our offense. And I would say that Mr. Plum right then showed a lot of patience in his play calling. The extra point is good. This is a Denver team that a year ago finished 27th in the league against the rush. They have improved that to the fourth best record in the league against the rush. They are averaging, giving up only 89 yards per game and on the opening drive of 13 plays, the Philadelphia Eagles go 96 yards on the ground. Welcome, those of you who have been watching the Rams-Chicago game from the Windy City, where the Bears halt their losing streak and extend the Rams' losing streak 20 to 10, the final there. And here we have 8 minutes and 31 seconds to go in the first quarter. The Philadelphia Eagles have just driven 96 yards in 13 plays, every one of them on the ground. And here's the touchdown run, Terry Bradshaw of Keith Byers. This is the counter trap by the Eagles that you know so well from the Washington Redskins. Pull the left guard and the left tackle. Byers gets in behind him. Once he got into the linebackers, he was able to break tackles, and the safeties grabbed on, and he carried him in. Great effort by Byers. Luis and Dejas will kick off. Vern Lundquist and Terry Bradshaw here in Denver, Colorado, where the Philadelphia Eagles are playing the Denver Broncos for only the sixth time. A spotlight of quarterbacks is what we have expected in Randall Cunningham and John Elway, but the Eagles, who saw the kickoff bobbled at their own four-yard line and put together a most impressive drive, 96 yards, 13 plays, every one of them from the foot soldiers. Every one of them on the ground against a team that is ranked four against the rush and did an outstanding job kind of counter punch they know you're good against the run the Eagles came out and said we're going to prove to you that we can run the football Sandejas will kick it deep to Ken Bell and Daryl Carrington this is Bell at the goal line and he's out to the 25 yard line Britt Hager makes the tackle and here comes John Elway on the field for the first time. 202 yards in the fourth quarter last week. And for the season, seven touchdowns and eight interceptions. He really erupted in the second half of that win over Seattle. His offensive line, Perry, who had a horrid game last week. Keith Kartz is injured and uh, may be able to go the distance today. Clarence Kay starts at tight end. Bobby Humphrey and Melvin Bratton. The rookie starting backfield. And Vance Johnson, Mark Jackson, the wide receivers, Young and Boker come in on passing down. Denver opens with a double tight end set, however, on first down. Play fake. And Elway comes left. Caught by Vance Johnson. Gets up and scoots out of bounds at the 47-yard line. If you're going to throw the football against Philadelphia, the best time to do it is on first down. That's because... That white 92 the end is always on the outside, not, not over the nose of the center. Play action, come back and find your guys and throw it. That's the best time to throw against Philadelphia. Avoid third and long if you possibly can. Vance Johnson, 5'11", 185 pounder, a 22-yard game. First and 10, 47. Humphrey, deep back in the eye behind Melvin Bratton. Here's the toss to Humphrey, bobbles it. Gets a perfect basketball bounce back into his arms. And the ball is whistled dead before the second fumble on that uh, nasty-looking play. Philadelphia defense, and they have played extraordinarily well. Reggie White, Pitts, Brown, and Simmons, the front four. The linebackers, Joyner, Evans, and Harris. The defensive secondary has been a little bit shaky in some games. Jenkins, Allen, Hopkins, and Waters. Rizal and Everett come in as the nickel and dime back respectively. And the first thing that the Eagles did, Vern, after that completion by Elway was bring Reggie White out of the end and put him at nose tackle over the center. It wasn't going to allow Elway to throw on first down. Sewell and Winder are in the backfield now out of the shotgun. Elway dipped, picked off by Izell Jenkins. Number 46 looks for a convoy and counter punches to the 41-yard line. The pass just a little bit high, but then it uh, was tipped by a receiver and returned 18 yards. Plenty of time for Elway to 
set up and throw. Plenty of time to pick out his receivers. Good job by his line. Notice no stunts by the rush. Plenty good pocket. Finds his man and just gunned it a little bit high. That's Vance Johnson, 82, that the pass was intended for, but thrown a little high. And did he or did he not catch it? Jenkins. Well, yeah, I, they're going to look at it on replay. Yeah, well, we see if he trapped it. If it if it holds, it's Izell Jenkins' fourth interception of the year. That ball was really whistling, wasn't it? Right off Johnson's you know, hands. If you throw one high like that, or you throw one hard like that, it's best to have it low so your receiver can react. Let's see if the, if Jenkins did indeed make the interception. Looks to me like, oh yeah. I don't know, Terry, that there's enough evidence there to overrule the uh, the, the conclusion that it was a uh, an interception. Welcome those of you who've been watching the Phoenix-Dallas game where the Cowboys lose their eighth in a row and Gene Stallings' team wins back in the city in which he coached for so many years. Philadelphia leads Denver here 7-0. They went 93 yards with the opening drive, or 96 yards, rather. Every one of them on the ground. Jim Tunney just announcing in the background that the play will stand. There was not conclusive evidence to overrule it. I think that's a very good call by Bill Fetty, the uh, replay judge. First down on Izell Jenkins' pass interception. Byers for the 14th straight time. The Eagles run the ball. Just a, a quick recap for those of you who just joined us. On the opening drive, the Eagles went 96 yards in 13 plays, every one of them on the ground. Byers got a 16-yard for the touchdown. Izell Jenkins just got the interception for the Philadelphia Eagles. It's a second down now. Byers and Higgs in the backfield. Tony on the bench with the injury. Byers going left. Good block from Heller. They are ripping this Denver Bronco defense to shreds, Terry. That's a 13-yard gain. They're running the counter trap, pulling both offside guard and tackle. And all, all that happens is that Byers will get in, Byers will get into the pocket of the offside guard. See the left guard I mean, on your screen, that'd be the right guard and the right tackle pulling out. Same play the Redskins run, they just copied it and do it a very fine job. What a block by Ron Heller on Rick Dennison. First and ten, again on the ground, it's Byers. We're going to do it and do it again, and then we'll do it one more time until you learn. Well, the fans Byers is injured now. Tony went out limping a while ago. Fans are getting upset, and what's happening is that there's really no change up in the in the Broncos uh, scheme, Vern. It's just very pretty much basic. And what's going to happen now is with the Eagles being able to run the football, they're going to have to get back to their slants, their stunts. They may even have the Broncos may even have to start blitzing. You can blitz to try to stop the run, and once they do that, though, they expose their corners and allow Cunningham an opportunity to throw deep and beat them. First and ten, draw play. Heath Sherman, number 23. Seventeen plays now on the ground. And they've got the ball at the ten-yard line. We'll get a report from the bench on Byers and Tony as quick as we can, but uh, Tony went out on the first series, and you just saw Keith Byers left out. Well, Buddy Ryan has said we, we're going... This may be carrying, establishing the ground game to an extreme. Second down and four. And again, they run it. Sherman dropped. Ron Holmes, number 90, acquired early in the season on a trade with Tampa Bay. Well, that's the first time we've seen the stunt by the Denver Broncos. When, when a team is running the ball extremely well on you and consistently doing it, you have to get out of what you normally do. And normally what the Broncos do is play the 3-4 three, three, defense very solid, very limited, no stunning, no blitzing. But now the Eagles are forcing them to change their attack. Third and six. Complete, Sherman. Football. Philadelphia ball. So Heath Sherman gets the uh, grab of the first pass from Randall Cunningham. Now, did he get the first down? They will bring out the chair.
chain. quarter 
play, 14-0 Philadelphia. Philadelphia team chasing the New York Giants, meeting a Denver team that has a three-game edge at the midway point of the season over its AFC Western Division rivals. Here's Steve Sewell making a late entrance into the ballgame, and Melvin Bratton comes out. Update you on other scores. Cincinnati wins big over Tampa Bay. Cleveland defeated Houston this afternoon. And here are the Denver Broncos for the second time in the ballgame. They loaded up on the left side. Now Kay starts in motion and a handoff up the middle. Bobby Humphrey, the rookie running back out of Alabama to the 23-yard line. Clyde Simmons, number 96, makes the tackle. Pittsburgh defeats Kansas City by six to go four and four for the year. And Buffalo over Miami by 14. In overtime, New England and Indianapolis are tied at 20. And the Saints win it again. They, they're about to climb right back into this thing. Chasing San Francisco, of course. And San Francisco leads the Jets 7-0. Washington's touchdown on a 99-yard kickoff return. And San Diego and Seattle are scoreless. Our score, 14-0, 2.08 to go, first quarter. That's Mobley in motion now. And Elway with the pass. Left side behind Mark Jackson with Eric Allen defending. Well, let's uh, focus in on Reggie White. The all-pro defensive tackle. Well, you can bet one thing that holding is something that Reggie White is very upset with. Is there holding here? No, that's just good job. But Reggie White, notice he, you will never see him get on a pass rush that someone, at least two people, are trying to block him. In a lot of cases, Vern three. That was Ken Lanier doing the blocking job there. Third down and seven now. Three wide receivers in. And Elway works out of the shotgun. Blitz coming. Simmons right in his face. And the pass incomplete as Clyde Simmons had an unobstructed path to John Elway. The thing that's happened for the Philadelphia Eagles, even though Reggie White does not have as many sacks as he has previously, has the four and, four and a half coming into this game, he occupies more than two people blocking him, and it's freeing up Simmons from the outside. That time, the Broncos were so concerned about Reggie White and where he was that they totally forgot about Clyde Simmons. Clyde coming from the outside, no one blocked him. Gizmo Williams to return Mike Haran's punt. It's a dandy. And Haran to Gizmo Williams at the 20. Got some room. A fine return to the 43. Mike Haran, who punted nine times last week in Seattle and had none returned. This time, that 57-yard punt is returned 23 yards. That's almost the longest return of the year for Gizmo Williams. As a matter of fact, it equals his longest. 14-0. Eagles have the lead and the football. For Broncos, nothing. There's Ron Holmes, who started the game in place of an injured Andre Townsend. The uh, Broncos were nicked, and Ron Holmes has started and played every down defensively so far. Now Philadelphia, which had had first-half scoring problems in the last four games. Boy, they have erupted for 14 first-quarter points. One touchdown in the previous first half of the last four games. And here's Byers. Cut down as he tries to come right. Tyrone Braxton, the third-year man out of North Dakota State, made the tackle. Last week, led the team in tackles. I think he had something like 12 tackles. And, and this scheme that is run by the Broncos, a lot of times you will have support by the safeties and the corners to come up and stop the run. And that time Braxton went off into coverage, saw the play, read it quickly, and then came up and made the stop of Byers. Already in the first quarter, 20 running plays for the Philadelphia Eagles. It's second and 10. Byers has already surpassed his season high rushing. Clock down to four seconds. They run it again. This is Robert Drummond, the rookie 12th round draft choice, or third round draft choice out of Syracuse. And it'll be third down. As we told you earlier, there five opponents for the Broncos have been held to less than 95 yards rushing in a game this year. And for the season, they've averaged giving up only 89 yards per game. And already today, Philadelphia has rushed for 139 yards. 14-0, and a third and seven. Shotgun for Cunningham, who's thrown twice. Hands it off to Byers. They'll punt. Fool me once, 
but you won't fool me twice. I believe that Philadelphia has run all of their running plays. They've tried them all and been very successful. And now the second time you run them, these are professional teams. They say, no way, Jose, we're going to get you. From Mile High Stadium, Vern Lundquist and Terry Bradshaw. The Eagles lead it by 14, but they'll have to punt now on fourth down and seven. A 16-yard touchdown run by Keith Byers and a five-yard toss from Cunningham to Chris Carter. The only points thus far. The Broncos have had one pass intercepted, and they've had to punt once. Here's John Telchik, Ken Bell at the 15. Bottle, battle for the ball. Philadelphia has it. Brett Hager, number 54, the rookie linebacker out of Texas. Last week was voted the best hit on special teams by the Eagles and was given $100 in a meeting last night. Over $900 were passed out to great hits. And Brett Egger, he was one of the gentlemen that got it. Look at Bell, 35, misjudged it. A very easy punt to catch because it was with the wind. The ball just floated down, and Bell obviously saw the rush coming, took his eyes off, which is a no-no, and a fine job by the Eagles of being on top of him and getting the ball back. There's Brett Hager. 100 bucks. Gotten rid of the mustache and shortened his haircut since he joined Philadelphia. Back in the uh, beginning of the season, Buddy Ryan referred to him as my hippie linebacker. Here's Byers going right as they keep it on the ground, and he's down at the nine-yard line. Just to elaborate on that point that Terry was making, the Eagles give $100 bonuses to their players, and this is perfectly within the parameters of the league rules. But he said, uh, that Ted Plum was telling us it's kind of interesting. These guys get so upset if they don't get the $100 <laughs> bonus. Here they are making these huge sums of money, but the recognition by the coaching staff for a special hit, and the $100 is worth something to them. yard line. There are two flags down now. Holding. I know the coaches hate it. I don't know if if Cunningham is hurt or if he's out of breath. We're at Mile High Stadium and it's not it is not that easy to run and keep your breath. There's a move. He tries to put a move on Dennis Smith, one of the real fine safeties in the league. And doggone him. Well, he does. He gets away from him. And then finally Braxton gets the shot. And I don't know if Randall landed on the ball or, or whether he's just from the lack of oxygen. I'm telling you, I, having played here, Vern, and ha if you have to run a lot, you don't bounce back as fast. I mean, it's very hard to get. It seems like I'm never going to get enough oxygen, you know, to, to replace what I've just spent. And, that he's out of oxygen. Matt Cavanaugh has not taken a snap this year. Randall has taken every one of them. There's Cavanaugh. You're looking at the very reason why Buddy Ryan is trying to get a running game going. It's to, number one, take the pressure off of Randall Cunningham, who has led this team three years in a row in rushing. A quarterback that leads him in rushing. He said, I don't want that. I want Byers. I want Tony. I want Higgs and Drummond. These are the guys I want to lead our team in rushing, not our quarterback. In today's higher revving and hotter running engines, where is it? Because an injury timeout was taken, Randall Cunningham will have to sit out at least one play, if not more, and uh, the medical staff tending to him now. So Matt Cavanaugh is in at quarterback. The holding call wiped out the run by Cunningham, and it gives the Eagles a second down from the 19-yard line. Matt Cavanaugh has not thrown a pass this year. He did come in in the first game of the year and hand the ball off a couple of times. Here is Matt Cavanaugh across the middle, intercepted. Now he's thrown one. Rick Dennison gets his first pick of the year. Watch it again, intended for Jimmy Johnson.
miles, Terry. Well, you can notice the outside. That's Simon Fletcher, 73, sitting on the outside of Giles. Dennison was on the inside, so in effect, they had a double team on the tight end. Cunningham, a veteran, should have noticed that, gotten away from the double team, and found the receiver that had one man covering him. At Indian summer weather in Colorado and the Rockies for the last couple of weeks. It did snow here in the mountains on Thursday, and the forecast for today for the Denver area was two to four inches of snow, but thus far it has held off. Skiers around the country don't want to hear that, though. They want to know, and, and I include you among them. <laughs> I'm going to get you on skis yet. <laughs> no, no, you're not. <laughs> oh, dear. First down and ten. As the uh, turnover is even up at one apiece. In this quarter, twice. Lights are down. Elway across the middle. Drop. Oh boy. Orson Mobley had to hit him right in the midsection. Best pass to run against teams that like to play man coverage. You've heard me say this time and time again. Is crossing routes. Offside against Philadelphia. Just to give you a quick recap, the Eagles opened up by driving 96 yards all on the ground. Offside, defense, still first down. Keith Byers then uh, scored the touchdown from 16 yards out. On the next possession, Denver's John Elway threw an interception. Isaiah Jenkins picked it off. Chris Carter caught a coming out pass to make it 14-0, and that's where we are right now. Philadelphia leading, and the Broncos have just gotten their first Turnover of the game, Rick Dennison's pass interception. First and five. Elway, right flat, caught. Mark Jackson as the cornerback. Izell Jenkins slipped. And that's complete out to the 34-yard line. Last week against Seattle, Jackson came in and said, we've got to we got to open it up. we got to go deep. These cornerbacks are settling on us, so the key is to drive the corners deeper and come back underneath. Notice that time Jackson went 15 to 18 yards deep, came back, fine throw by John Elway. There's a snap from behind as Elway goes back to throw it and makes it complete on the right side to Jackson. Now back to live action. First and 10. 14 to nothing. Philadelphia leads it. There's Randall Cunningham. The report from the bench is a bruised shoulder, but he will return. Randall Cunningham, who uh, has been a little testy, Terry, in, in, in the criticism of, of his lack of productivity passing the ball. I think you think he's just going through an emotional time of learning what the game is all about. Exactly. It's an emotional growth that he's going through. There's a downside where everyone's on you. Then there's the great side when everybody loves you. And he's experiencing the downside right now. And he's having to adjust to it. Having to get used to it. Second down. Eight. Reggie White. Oh, did he blow in? Oh, my gosh. Kendall Lanier, the right tackle, had no help. No one was there to help Lanier, the right tackle. When Reggie White talked to us, he said, very seldom do I ever have the opportunity of going past one blocker. Notice this. White on Lanier pushes him aside here. Get out of the way. And there's Elway, the prize, waiting on him. Reggie White's fifth sack, five and a half now for the year. Philadelphia trailing the Vikings by seven sacks among the leaders in the National Football League. And the front four have gotten most of them. And it's been the triple and double teaming on Reggie White that has allowed his teammates to get their shots at the quarterback. Time has been called now by the Denver Broncos as the 45-second clock was about to expire. It's 14-0 Philadelphia. And went 96 yards in 13 plays, every one of them on the ground to get the first touchdown. That kind of set the tenor for the game, but they've been a very dominant team, Terry, thus far. Well, they have. Their defense is playing extremely well, and one of the reasons Ryan wanted to get a running game going, he felt like, was that it helps the defense. It helps keep them on the bench. Also, when they come out, they're fresh, and this is a very aggressive defense that gives it all every play, and they need a break, so the running game helps their defense. Reggie White just got a sack, his fifth of the year. Here comes the stunts. Frizzell on the blitz. Elway lets it go. Eric Allen picks it off. Frizzell was coming on the blitz. That allowed Allen to run under.
to the pass, third turnover the Eagles have accomplished in the first half of play. Two things, two major differences in the in the style of defense is Philadelphia is aggressive. They attack, they safety blitz, they corner blitz, they send linebackers. The Broncos, on the other hand, sit back and play very soft in their defensive coverage. Elway had no chance that time. He saw the safety coming. He had when he turned his head around, he had to get rid of the football in a case like that. Don't try to complete it. Throw it into the crowd. He's got the that kind of arm. He can do it. Do you know what Mac Notice William Frizzell comes from the blind side. Elway will blitz control to the left side, not to the right. He missed the blitz there. Normally when you see the blitz coming from the right, you blitz control to that side. Notice he turns around, never sees it too late, anticipates it at the very last, underthrows the pass, and the fine job by Eric Allen, 21, as he came off his route, saw the ball, made a heck of an interception, diving interception, and kept both feet in bounds. There is Eric Allen, his fourth interception. Frizzell coming on the uh, on the blitz. In the background, you see Keith Jackson, who was bothered by an ankle injury and did not start today. Keith, of course, along with Michael Quick, such a vital cog in the air attack of the Philadelphia Eagles. And uh, he missed one full game, also had to sit out of halves of two others. Now, Randall Cunningham is coming back into the lineup. He set out the one play as you look at other scores. Now they are, we are told that they are looking at the instant replay to see whether Eric Allen had possession when he made the interception. Well, first of all, you have to establish the catch. So there's the catch. Left foot, drug the right foot, and I would say that that is, that is an interception. All you first you do, you establish the catch. Does he have possession? Now both feet must come down in bounds. And I counted left foot and right foot, and it appeared that he got both of them in. Somewhere behind that screen is Bill Fetty and Don Anderson, the communicator. They continue to look at it, and here's Jim Tunney. I think he's going to say it's inconclusive. Through the play stands, interception, first down. Eric Allen gets his fourth. Izell Jenkins has his fourth also. And the Eagles of the T as a team have 18 interceptions for the year. Philadelphia leading 14 0 with Randall Cunningham back in the lineup. Fires. Rotating defense by the Broncos. Here's Byers going right, jammed up. Ron Holmes up on top as Byers gets hit initially by Michael Brooks at the 40 yard line. Right now we're seeing the Broncos, Vern, come up and stop the run. They're stopping the run on first down. The best time to do play action is on first down, especially if you've been successful with the run, because everyone says, well, I want to stop the run. So, man, they get up in there, and then all of a sudden you pull the ball out, and then you throw the ball deep. So now I would say that Philadelphia has to change their strategy, start thinking outside, start thinking play action. Second down and eight, 14 nothing. Here's the reverse. Ron Johnson, number 85. He's got three men in front. Step. Pulls the ball out. It goes out of bounds. It will be the Eagles football as Dennis Smith came flying from around the back and got to Ron Johnson. Uh, well, we said they need to go wide, and that's a way of going wide over the, the gadget. You see the play go one way. It's a misdirection. They call them gadgets because they're just not normal plays. There's Byers. He's been running the football, so hand it to Byers, and then everyone goes to Byers, and then you come back with Johnson on a reverse, and then you hope that Johnson will move the ball and put it in his right arm so that Smith can't knock it out. He kept it in his left. Simon Fletcher comes in and all of a sudden realizes he is in deep trouble. Whoops. Back to live action now. Carter starts in motion. Here comes Mark Hicks. Steve Atwater, number 27, knocks him out of bounds at the 23-yard line. A young man, 5'7", 200-pounder, who was an unrestricted free agent, acquired plan B from the Dallas Cowboys. Well, now they've gone to Hicks, a speed back, who gets outside. That's where they're running the football and running successful in the second quarter. Hicks, a back that says, I like to get in behind the lineman. They can't see me. I hide behind him. Buddy Ryan says, hey, I'm only going to use the guy 10 or 12 plays. He just can't take the pound. Simon Fletcher, number 73. And Hicks turned the corner on Fletcher and gets around to the left side for a first down. Reagan makes the tackle. Boy, that counter gap, Terry. That's what, that, 
everyone runs the counter gap. Some run it better. You know, we talked to uh, uh, Gibbs at Washington. He said, everyone watches it. We said, well, who would you think runs it well? He said, well, Philadelphia runs it pretty well, and the Rams run it pretty well, and some teams don't run it well at all. They don't understand it, but the Eagles now are doing a very nice job of it. Such a simple, it's, it's a simple run. Holding 73 during the run, still first down. No wonder Ron Heller destroyed Mark Munford. Let's take a close-up of this and see what the holding is. Left of your screen is 73. That's Ron Heller. That's the right tackle. And they're calling him holding. The reason is the hand was underneath the defensive back and around him. First and 15, screen pass. Higgs. Cragen gets there, number 71 for the Broncos. And Alfonso Carriker joined by Michael Brooks, number 56. You know, Vern, I just don't think this is a good team to throw screens on. Even though they're a zone team, their linebackers don't get deep enough. You know, if they got back 10, 15 yards like some teams do, yeah, run those screens, get those big tackles out there. But they only get back five, seven yards until they can react very quickly to screens. Interesting, we thought that that, that this defensive weight key with the Broncos would test the patience of Randall Cunningham. So far, they've done just about everything right. Second down and 16. Here comes the blitz. No, it's a four-man rush. The pass, Carter. And that will be short of the first down, way short, because he gets to the 26-yard line. Tyrone Braxton and Wyman Henderson. One, one, one thing that is very obvious in the passing attack of the Eagles, and maybe one of the reasons why Cunningham has had problems putting the numbers up, they do not. The Eagles do not have quick. He stretches the defense. He's the speed man. It takes two people to cover him, sometimes three, which open up the lanes for the other guys. The receivers that the Eagles have on this field today are primarily, with the exception of Johnson, primarily are possession-type receivers. Run very good routes, but are not burners. Four receivers in now on third and 11. Draw play. Byers stopped at the 23. And they'll bring on Luis Sendejas, who is, uh, to be kind about it, having an inconsistent year. Sendejas, uh, some of the papers were speculating back in Philadelphia that his job is in jeopardy. Yeah, but how would you like to be a guy that every time you swung your leg at a ball, it could mean the, the difference between victory or, or, and losing? And so every time he does something, it's magnified. I wouldn't want to be a kicker. I don't care how much money. Yeah, I take that back. It, it, that would make a difference. Nine of 14 for the year. This is from 41 yards out. Good friend of Randall Cunningham. 
dinner on Friday night as the Eagles came in town early. Yeah, and they went shopping too, and Rondo was running, going in and buying some clothes, and we asked him what kind. He said expensive clothes. 21 yard in, hardest pass to catch, man coverage, a team that loves to hit, a quarterback that guns it in there, takes a lot of courage. Johnson has it. Johnson's second catch, that's good for 21 and a first down at the 45. 14 nothing Philadelphia. Mobley in motion, Elway. Left side, caught by Johnson again, and runs out of bounds of a nine yard gain. If you can give Elway time to throw against man, a team that likes to cover the receivers man to man, he should be able to have a field day. I don't care how good they are. There's no defensive back that can cover a wide receiver. Johnson, once again, a simple sideline pattern. What they're setting up, I believe, is from the slot, Johnson will run sideline routes all day long. But once the corners overplay, look for Elway to throw deep to the post to Johnson in the slot. Second and one. Trap play inside. Melvin Bratton out of Miami. The seventh round draft choice who sat out of football for two years with an injury sustained on New Year's Day two years ago. Jeff Fisher told us, the defensive coordinator for the Eagles, there are two plays that we must stop. Number one is from split backs, the trap. The number two is the draw. That time, it was the draw that got the first down for the Broncos. Jeff Fisher at 31, the youngest defensive coordinator in the league. First down and 10, 14 nothing. Broncos' most serious threat thus far, they trail. Elway straight drop into the flat caught by Bobby Humphrey. Flag is down. This one will come back if the Eagles so desire. Seth Joyner, number 59, makes the tackle. And it'll be holding against somebody in that Denver line. It's been a patch-up Denver offense for Dan Reeves. Carts, as we told you, was probable for today. He is playing. Ball setting fouls. Oh. The down will be replayed. Only use of the hands. 67 offense. 74 defense. Penalties all set. It'll still be first down. Mike Pitts. Doug Wydell for Denver. There's Wydell, who is in at right guard. Let's just get you up to date on what's going on with this offensive line now. The Broncos have Gerald Perry, number 60, at left tackle. At left guard currently is Jim Jeriga, who's moved over from the right spot. Keith Bishop is on the bench. Keith Kartz continues at the center. And the rookie, Wydell, has moved in at right guard. And then Ken Lanier at right tackle. There's Keith Kartz, number 72, playing on an injured ankle and affected by a loss of hearing because of an ear infection. So he's been handicapped for the last month or so. The late blitz, Wes Hopkins coming. Elway sidearms it and finds Mobley for the first down at the 28. There's a scramble for a loose ball, but the whistle had blown. Hopkins comes, he waits, he waits, and then he comes at the last moment, and over here, the down and the in by the tight end. The key was Elway having the time to pick up the blitz. There's the blitz, Jenkins coming. Hopkins, that is, now the sidearm throwing a fine route by Mobley, the tight end to get open. Philadelphia leads it 14 to nothing, 5.20 to go first half. Broncos with a first down at the 28-yard line. Back to split. Humphrey. Andre Waters with the tackle at the 21. Waters, who now has sole possession of the starting spot since Todd Bell is out with an injury. Two plays, one was the draw to the back, the other now is the draw trap. The left guard, Jeriga, pulls, he kicks out, the back comes underneath and gets in the hip pocket of the pulling guard, Jeriga. The two plays Fisher said, I'm worried about from split backs is the draw and the trap. There's the trap with Jeriga doing a fine job pulling and leading out. Second down and three, 14 nothing Philadelphia. Way back. Elway into traffic, first and goal at the 10-yard line. Found Johnson again. What beats, what beats zones is a strong-armed quarterback and receivers with courage. Inside route by Johnson. Look at him come down inside, outside. Isaiah Jenkins turns him loose. And then now, nice route by, by, nice route by Johnson. You know what he did?
did, Vern. I just noticed it. He slowed down. He saw that he was going to get into the area before John Elway was ready, so he slowed his route down so the timing between him and the quarterback would be perfect. Four catches for Johnson now for 63 yards. First and goal from the 10. Elway quarterback draw, sprint to the end zone, touchdown! designed and that's his second touchdown on the ground this year there is only one player inside the 10 yard line that does not have any responsibility over him. no one covers him and that is the quarterback and that is why Elway was able to set up show pass and then sprint into the end zone because no one was to cover him and it was man coverage Kubiak will hold Treadwell will kick it's good and the lead has been shaved in half Notice Elway will take the snap. Seth Joyner to the outside will come on a blitz. He's picked up. Elway sees him go wide. Then the pressure pushes him out by Byron Evans, who blitzes up the middle. Once again, who covers the quarterback when there's a blitz? I'm going to tell you, nobody. I mean, nobody. There's Byron Evans. He forces him out. Seth Joyner goes by him. And then the beautiful lane set up by Elway, who's an outstanding scrambler running himself. 14 to 7 with 344 to go in the half. So the Broncos climb back into it. They were down by 14, as we said, to Seattle last week. And now these 76,000 began to raise a ruckus. Yeah. Didn't know my accountant was here. David Treadwell. Boy, it does blow in this stadium. And look at these. I guess they're hot dog wrappers. I'm not sure what that is. It's just confetti blowing around in the wind. <laughs> Look like a lot of hash marks. Treadwell will kick off. Our kicks. He's Sherman of the deep end for the Eagles. Sherman at the one. Let's go back and see what they're doing with Reggie White, particularly on that touchdown run by John Elway. Well, first of all, let's make sure that Reggie White, let's make sure that he's not being, being held. I believe that's Reggie right there. No numbers, but he is the left defensive end. That is him. Down inside, double team Lanier. The tackle gets left hand and a right hand. Two people, nothing. Like the rush by the linebackers with the blitz by two or more linebackers forces that way out for the touchdown. Eagles keep it on the ground. Anthony Tony, who was out with a bruised shoulder, is back in and gets the carry for a modest gain of three feet at the right guard spot. So 14 to 7 now as the Eagles continue to keep it on the ground. Philadelphia open by going 96 yards and 13 plays on the ground. But only 30 yards in this quarter. The Broncos have turned it around with 88 yards in this quarter. Second down and eight now. Carl Mecklenburg, the weak inside linebacker. Behind the line, it's Rick Dennison, number 55. Excellent job by Ron Holmes. Stan, he's playing in a place that towns and there's a pull hamstring. Holmes forcing the running back back inside. But let me make this point once again. You run plays and, that, and if they're successful, the defense will adjust and take them away. In the first quarter alone, the entire rushing game of the Eagles was between their guards straight up. And now in the second half, they can't go inside. And now they're having a hard time going outside. Nickel defense in for the Broncos on third and nine. Wyman Henderson backs off. The blitz is on. Here comes Fletcher. He gets to Cunningham. Just as the pass is released, it's incomplete. No catch. It would have been a first down. Simon Fletcher, number 73, just about got there. Simon Fletcher, number 73. That's him circled. 
His main route, when he says, I rush the passer, I back my ears and I just sprint. Gets there just a second late, but you have to feel that Cunningham felt his presence. Most great quarterbacks feel the pressure. He got rid of the ball, but Fletcher let him know he was there. John Kelchick will punt to Ken Bell. Whoa. Bell, who's fumbled one, grabs this one for 32. Looks for help. Gets it back to the 40, and a shoving match breaks out. Robert Drummond, man, he had a little Muhammad Ali in him. Bouncing <laughs> back, pop, 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 little jab, little hook. I was impressed with that. 14 to 7. Broncos have the ball. Two minute warning is here. There's a motor oil. Just under two minutes remaining in the first half, just after we left Mile High Stadium, a penalty was called on Randy Robbins. A dead ball foul for blocking out of bounds. So it was accepted by the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, and the ball was marked off inside the 20. Danny Reeves was not a happy human being when the penalty was called. Late flag, and Danny gave the officials a mouth word, uh, a mouthful, but uh, nevertheless, the penalty pushes Denver back inside the 20-yard line. Dan Reeves, whose wife, by the way, Pam, is not here at the ball game today. She is down in Dallas because Dan's former teammate, Leroy Jordan, was installed in the Cowboys Ring of Honor at Texas Stadium today. And of course, Danny couldn't be here, so Pam went down to represent the family with uh, Leroy and Betty Jordan in Dallas. Well, it's rocking here at Mile High today, and how about next Saturday up in Boulder, just 25, 30 miles away? Next Saturday, the showdown, fourth ranked Nebraska, undefeated at 8 0. Colorado currently ranked third. They're sure to move up when the vote comes out tomorrow. They meet in Boulder next Saturday on CBS. That ought to be a heck of a football game. First down and 10. Denver backs in the eye. Play fake. Elway being chased by Simmons. And runs it out of bounds. As Seth Jordan comes over to help. And it's a loss back to the 15-yard line. Yeah, one of the things that happened in Vern that the receivers for the Broncos, because of Elway's tremendously strong arm, when he scrambles and gets out of the pocket, they run to the goal line. On the other hand, the Eagles, they come back to Randall and give him a pocket. So it may be a difference of, of a 10 or 15 yard completion. As for Elway, it might be a 40 or 50. That time, Elway had no one coming back to help him out of trouble so he could get the ball off and get a 10 or 15 yarder. Everyone was sprinting down the field. Second down and 15. From the 15. Looks like he wanted to shovel pass it now. Pulls up, dodges and drills it. Man open at the 32 first down. Michael Young, who had a huge game a week ago with six catches for 137 yards. This is a dash series by the Broncos. The dash series is where the quarterback will take the snap, move out, scramble, and then Elway gets outside. No one there, then finally gets his ball off to Young, who worked himself open. 120 to go. Elway, incomplete. And was he in the grasp? Looks like they're ruling he was in the grasp. Clyde Simmons got there. Yep, Jim Tunney is going to call in the grasp, I believe. Yep. Well, in the grasp, both hands totally in charge. Does he have him both hands firmly? That's a judgment call. Tony says he does. Hey, they're, you know, these guys are out here to protect the quarterbacks, and that's what the owners want, and I have a feeling that Elway doesn't like it. I know Cunningham doesn't like it. I know I don't like it, but that's the way it is. We have to play within the rules, I guess. Third sack by this Philadelphia team. Clyde Simmons gets his first. Here's the shovel pass. Reggie White. Oh, gee whiz. Well, there was an NFLPA survey just released, National Football League Players Association. And by his peers, this man was voted the outstanding defensive player in the National Football League. Exactly. Time has been called as Reggie White makes the tackle with 48 seconds to go. 14 to 7, 48 seconds.
seconds to go. Both teams have two timeouts left, and Reggie White and his Eagle teammates lead it by a 14-7 count. John Elway, 8 of 12 for 107 yards, and he scored the touchdown on the 10-yard run. This is the kind of defense, I don't say it's going to happen here, Terry, but occasionally against this 46, you can hit the big play. Well, uh, the 46 is a very aggressive defense, and once again, we'll say that all the receivers are primarily manned up. They have someone manned covering them. If you beat them, there's no one behind them, so you can hit the big plays. This time, the handoff goes to Steve Sewell, and it'll be fourth down, and the Philadelphia Eagles use another of their timeouts because they're going to get the ball back now. And this... Uh, Bronco crowd, there's just a, a hint of booing in this crowd after that play call. Gary Kubiak and Dan Reeves on the sideline. You know, it looks, when you look at this stadium, Vern, the wind plays such an important part as a passer and in, in the kicking game, but in the closed end, it looks like the wind's blowing from the open end into the closed end, and you would say, well, that's, we want to punt, you know, with the wind in the open side, but it's just counter that. You know, the flag's blowing at you. It's really blowing with you, and so this, therefore, I'm going to tell you that the Broncos, although the wind's blowing in their face, it really isn't. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does to me, <laughs> but then I've been with you for four years. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's fourth and 19. <laughs> see, if, see if you can clean that up a little bit. Will you? If, it's, if it's blowing in your face, it really isn't. That, there you go. There, How's there, that? Now I really understand. I figured you'd understand that. Which scares me a little bit. Mike Horan, who played for Philadelphia back in 84 85, that's a short punt. Gizmo Williams had a 23 yarder earlier. And he gives the Eagles good field position at the 46-yard line with a 14-yard return. Henry Williams, who joined this team this year after seven years in Canada, and he's limping a little bit as he goes off. 32 seconds to go. And Randall Cunningham brings the Eagles back on next Sunday on CBS. NFL action. It all begins with the NFL today live at 12.30 Eastern. And many of you will see the Rams battle Herschel Walker in Minnesota. Others will see Chicago and Green Bay and late the Giants at Phoenix or Philadelphia at San Diego. That's next week, and it begins with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern time. Cunningham to pass for the sixth time. Keith Byers dances out of bounds with a nine-yard gain, and that stops the clock with 26 seconds remaining. It's only the sixth pass attempt that Cunningham had. He's five for six for 22 yards, and He'll be hard-pressed to be able to gun the ball, Vern, into the end zone. The zone that Denver will throw at him here doesn't allow that, but they are, there are seams, and what he did that time was throw the flat to Byers, and Byers is able to get out of bounds. 14-7, Eagle lead. They go deep left side for Johnson, and he had a step on Kip Corrington. The favorite route that Johnson has... And the coaches tell you this, and the players tell you, Johnson, Ron Johnson, runs the best corner route of anyone on our football team. And that time, Johnson went in, he went to the corner. It's a great route against zones because it sets up the safety for an inside route, and then it runs away from him to the corner. That time he was open, the ball was just slightly overthrown. Brings up third and one with 20 seconds to go. Well, 
they had dinner together last night. Wade Phillips invited as many of the Bronco coaches who wanted to join him for dinner as could, and five of them did, including Buddy Ryan. There's Wade Phillips. There was even some talk in the paper, some of the things that Ryan had said that were not very nice about Wade Phillips, and so I was surprised that he would go have dinner with him. Nice special teams play, and Britt Hager falls on the ball at the four-yard line, but that'll be the final play of the half. The Eagles opened up with a 14-0 lead. Dan Reeves' team came back with one second quarter touchdown. That's it. And by today's truck, Chevrolet. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. A hit of winter in the air, 41 degrees, a threat of snow, but nothing so far in a good ball game here in late October, 14-7. The Philadelphia Eagles jumped off to a 14-0 count, and John Elway scored on a 10-yard touchdown run to make it 14-7. And it was on that touchdown run that Reggie White may or may not have been held. He has been complaining all year long about being held by opponent, opponent, opposing. Boy, it's a tough word to say. <laughs> opposing. Opposing. Uh, thank you, Terry. <laughs> Number 92 is Reggie White. Was he held here? Well, let's look. In Kendall near the right tackle, got, put a little hand on his hip. Now he has him on the side, and that's not holding. The right hand is actually out of the frame of the holding. Now, that's holding. That right there, my friend, is holding. Now, I, I, you see, you said that wasn't holding, and that is holding, and yeah. I'm confused, and I'll bet you are. What okay. is holding? Okay, obviously, if I'm a tackle and you're Reggie White, and I'm coming up to block you, Vern, and I grab you like this, and you try to get by me, and I can, I do this, I'm, I'm obviously holding you. Yes, you are. The blocking frame for a blocker, a lineman, is the shoulders through the waist. This area here, I can extend my hands. That's not holding. But okay. once you get past me, now you turn sideways and you're by me. Here's where I can block you. I can block you in here. If my hand goes behind you, or if I stay locked in right here, you can pull me down. That's the old uh, Huey, the long rule. Now that's holding. So the framework here, I can block you, but if I get around behind you, it's holding. Obviously, that's holding. The last one I could figure out. <laughs> the rest is iffy. Well, that's holding, and that gives you an idea of really some of the problems that the, that the officials have in making snap judgments on whether or not it's still Exactly, or not. because as the defensive line rushes, then the linemen have to move with him, and as they move, he moves, then every time the body turns, then the blocking frame changes. He said something very interesting to us. He said it got to him last week. He felt like the Raiders had held him as bad as any team in the league. To the extent, Terry, he said, I almost wish I wasn't as good as I am. Kind and, of an and what he meant by that yeah. was if I wasn't as good as I am, then teams wouldn't put two and sometimes three players on me, and I could get sacks. I'm making so much money now that I feel like I, I have to go out and make sacks because making the sacks is what drew the attention to, to me and got me the money in the first place. But now I feel like I have to go out and prove to the fans that I'm worthy of this money, and the only way I can do that is by making sacks. But now I'm so good, teams are putting two and three players on me, I can't make the sacks. Reggie White does have one sack so far. That gives him five and a half for the year. One of the highlights defensively for the Eagles in the first half. Let's get you up to date on what happened statistically in the first two quarters of play here at Mile High Stadium. First of all, first downs, the Eagles with 10 and the Broncos with one. Now these are in the first quarter of play, 139 yards to none on the ground in the time of possession overwhelmingly in the Eagles' favor. And of course they got those 14 points, but then it reversed in the second 15, 89 yards to three in the air and 120 total yards for Denver and uh, seven points for the Broncos in that second quarter. And thus far, modest numbers for both quarterbacks. Elway, 8 of 12. Cunningham, 5 of 7 for only 22 yards. Yeah, modest is a major understatement. 22 yards passing uh, is uh, it's, it's ridiculously low. But once again, Ryan said, we're going to run the football. And uh, I think he's going to run it to a point that he's going to prove a point. Ken Bell returns Luis Zendejas' kick and gets the crowd off its feet as he's out across the 30 near the 34-yard line, and John Elway will get to come back on. Britt Hager makes the tackle. Of course, the Broncos trying to establish a ground game this year, and 
John told us yesterday, I'm, I'm doing something I've never had to do before, and that's learn to be a quarterback with a ground attack. We've never had one here in Denver. I never had one in Stanford. And he said, I am now becoming a cerebral quarterback. I now have to study the line blocking. I have to call the blocking assignments at the line of scrimmage. And he said, now I have to study more than I ever had in my entire professional career. Three receivers in on first down. The handoff goes to Bobby Humphrey. Big hole. There's the ground game. with the tackle, a gain of 17. This is a similar to a draw trap as Elway now with one back, and, and that's Humphrey. Notice how he slides over now. Notice the counter pull. Notice the left guard pulling, Jeriga, and the left tackle, Gerald Berry, pulling now. That's the single back counter gap trap that's run by the Broncos. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? One back as opposed to Philadelphia using two backs. 26 yards and six carries now, 17 on that tote. First down at the 45, Eagles lead it 14 to 7. Seattle led Denver 14 nothing last week. Sewell is out to the right side, Elway goes in the middle, and a mix-up on the route. Johnson pulled up short, and Steve Sewell was all by himself down the right side. Steve Sewell, as Elway is, it's a, I don't know, You're, aren't you coming inside? But the real key is Sewell, 30. If I were a defensive player, anytime he comes in the game, I would worry about him because, number one, he is a running back, has running back number. Number two, when he goes out wide, he's a receiver. What happened to Reggie White on the last play? You don't think he got held, do you, Vern? There's a nice job, a little face mask, then a double team. Second down and 10. Split backs. It's a live football. John may be shaking up. No, he's going to get up and be all right. Reggie White. And let's look at it again. Well, you have to be concerned if you're going to throw the football with 92. He, here's where it starts. Is that holding? Hand over the hands around the shoulder pads. I would say I'd flip a coin there. But the key is that time, as you worry about White, look out. Because from the backside comes Clyde Simmons, and be assured of one thing, he can he can rush the passer and he can get sacks. Third and 17, and the Eagles load up on the line. They're only sending four though. Elway with that half roll gets by Seth Joyner and can't connect with Melvin Bratton. The pass was too high, and it's doubtful that Bratton had a path to get the first down, but he would have picked up a pretty decent amount of yardage. It'll be fourth down. And Mike Horan is on to punt. Henry Williams has had a big day. As we told you in the first half, Horan with nine punts last week, none were returned. Both have been returned this time thus far. Fair catch, and Horan gets a terrific roll on the ball. nothing on the return. We addition to the ball game. The Philadelphia Eagles had the ball just about here following a fumbled kickoff and they went 96 yards on the ground. 13 plays, every one of them a run. Now they've got a first down with a 14 to 7 lead and I expect they'll do much the same. Well, Monday Night Football Cleveland's Kozar threw a play action for 97 yards and we have not seen one play action pass so far by Randall Cunningham. Wouldn't this be a nice place? Nope. Anthony Tony, conservative call, but I do agree with you. It would have been. You know, we've seen so much by this change of the Bronco defense and, and Wade Phillips bringing it in here. And one of the real keys to it when we were talking to Carl Mecklenburg was that it allowed rookies to come and play because the defense was basically a simple defense with just two or three audibles and therefore it was easier for the rookies to pick up and they could get more talent out on the football field sooner in their careers. Second down and six. Atwater's a starter now. And the flag flies. Ron Holmes and Cunningham look at each other and start drawing. Let's see if it's a delay call. That's going to be on Ron Ellert, right tackle, I believe. 
False start. Number 73, offense. Sean Heller. I hate. I hate. Look at Ron Eller. On the left of your screen, 73, just the movement, the movement that time of the defensive end actually caused Heller to make an adjustment. But I hate being backed up like that. As a player, there's only one place on a football field I absolutely was not comfortable, and that's making a huddle in my end zone and having to come out and move the ball 97, 95, whatever. From the end zone, Cunningham almost... Almost picked off. Alfonso Carriker, 92, I believe, tipped it. And then Dennis Smith was in the area about ready to grab it. There's Carriker, a plan B acquisition from Green Bay. Yeah, you throw slants against zones too, Vern, because you're throwing in seams. And if that ball had not been tipped, Byers had that ball. He was open. He would have caught it. There's no one there. And it was a foot race. Slants, quick slants are outstanding. Excellent routes in zone. On their first two possessions, the Eagles 147 yards. Since then, not much has gone right. Four wide receivers on third and ten. Cunningham will run. He gets by Robbins, but the spy, Steve Atwater, hauls him down at the 11-yard line. And I say spy because Atwater's task today is to mirror Randall Cunningham. Exactly. 27 is the starting free safety. What has happened? Notice he's coming back. Now he settles. Look at him looking at Cunningham. Watching Cunningham. I got you, Cunningham. I see you, Cunningham. I'm not letting you get out of my sight. Now he breaks down, and then he comes in for the tackle. That's his responsibility today in third and long. And he did it well then. It'll be fourth down, and John Telchik is in the end zone. Nice and high, but returnable. Ken Bell runs under it. Bubbles it again. Broncos offense will take over at the 41. That's the second time this afternoon that Ken Bell has dropped a punt. 14 to 7, the Broncos trail a penalty after the uh, we left you, so the uh, Broncos will take over at the 31-yard line. It was a holding call. Of course, another sellout crowd. The Broncos, the major team in Colorado, and they are popular and they are well covered, but they do get a little media exposure. For example, Dan Reeves has a television show. That's not really unusual for a coach to have one. But look at this. On Monday night, you can watch Dan Reeves on the NBC affiliate, Dennis Smith and Tony Dorsett on the ABC affiliate, or John Elway on the CBS affiliate. Reeves wins. we got to yep. talk to John yeah, about the show. Yeah, he's killing our ratings. John, come on, get a guitar out. And then Sunday at 10.30, if you're in the Denver area, Vance Johnson gets an eight rating on his show. Mark Jackson, another of the amigos, has one Saturdays at 6.30. And there are any number of radio shows throughout the week. So Amazing. Monday nights, just take your choice. Just you get the remote clicker. I sit up in Steamboat, click that thing. I go, <laughs> well, let's see what Reeves has to say. What about Elway? Nah, how about Dorsett? Nah. And off to the 33-yard line. Melvin Bratton with the carry. Wasn't much there. You're talking about shows, but I, I found it so interesting in, in, a, in, a, in a city like Denver. Uh, it's amazing this many TV shows and radio shows, and I've been on a lot of these radio shows, but in Pittsburgh, when we were winning, we, no one had a radio show. No one had a television show. Zero. Nada. Nothing. You didn't do any of them? None. They were winning. I don't know why. Second down and nine. 14 to 7. Broncos trail. whisper of the presence of Wes Hopkins and Hopkins has a reputation of being one of the fine tacklers and hitters in the league let's check well, the holding again play action to freeze linebackers and, and throw which is excellent decisions and once again we've got our man white isolated and that's a nice job. <laughs> good job Clarence K all right 88 that's a beautiful job of holding yes it was <laughs> Recognize that. Third and nine, Denver. They trail 14 to 7. Trying to go 7 and 1 at the halfway point. Here comes Frizzell in the flat. They got him. That's the fourth sack today. Fifth. Five times that Dan Reeves' quarterback has been dropped behind the line. sidelines and so does John Elway Mike Coran back to punt Williams at the 28 
just made that tackle, number 58, and reminds me of an old Jerry Clower story when a great running back, he missed him on the first stop, and the guy said, aren't you going to chase him? He said, no, he'll be back here in a minute. Curtis missed, <laughs> missed the, on the tackle, just sat there, and all of a sudden, <laughs> here comes the receiver back to him, and he made the stop. Yeah, missing one time, wait, save your energy, didn't nail him. Scott Curtis from another of those football factories, New Hampshire. Well, they talk so much about you have to play in a big-time program to be in the NFL. And here's the catch by Jimmy Giles, and he's got Connor in front. The 34-year veteran is in for the touchdown. 66 yards, and there are no flags. Went. Well, there it is, a little play action, froze the linebacker, Dennison, just enough to allow Giles the one step, and then the perfectly thrown ball, and then here's a wonderful job of running by Giles, picks up Carter, who escorts him in, good block on Atwater, and then Giles gets in. Giles opted for plan B, went to the Raiders, wanted to go to the West Coast and get a better contract, was released, and then Buddy Ryan brought him back. He loves his leadership. Right now, he loves his results. The play action pass from Cunningham, isn't it nice? Jimmy Giles playing for Keith Jackson, who's injured. 66 yards. And in for the touchdown, and now Zendejas will try and tackle on the extra point. Play action pass. Cunningham was 5 of 7 for 22. And they triple the yardage with a 34-year-old veteran who was once traded for the rights to Earl Campbell. Maybe this is what, Bert, maybe this is what Buddy Ryan's talking about. Quality passing. Quality passing. We don't want to throw many, but when we do, we want to get big results. Nice job. kick off following the 66-yard pass reception by Jimmy Giles. This is Kent Bell. Robert Drummond out to the 34-yard line. The tackle made by Drummond as Jimmy Giles looks on. Let's go back and check in with Brent Musburger. There are no doubt about this. This Bo does know football. Bo Jackson of the Los Angeles Raiders explodes for 73 yards and a touchdown. Now watch, watch big man. Huff and puff and try to keep going where you can't get him. Touchdown and the Raiders now pulling away from the Redskins. 24-10 back to Burke. Oh, Brent, that's a real shocker, huh? The Eagles... Leading here, and the Redskins, of course, trailing. Those two meet for the rematch in a couple of weeks. First down and 10. 21 to 7. Denver trails it by 14. Elway. Vance Johnson to the 39 yard line. Well, let's check in on Reggie White one more time, see how he's doing. Well, we've got Kendall in there. He's not going to like us showing this, but if he does a good job, and there's the right hand high, and that's just a good job by Lanier that time. Good job, got his hands up, cut off the path of White. I mean, of, of yeah, of White, and allowed Elway time to throw. Second down and five, 21 to seven, 9:38 to go, third quarter. Philadelphia has led throughout. said this offense that he's been running is restrictive, it's confining, and it's conservative, and I'm a vertical passer. In other words, I want to throw the ball down the field, and when you throw balls out into the flat, that is not vertical passing, and what John has to learn is that when a player goes out in the flat, people run with him, don't throw the ball there. There's someone else that's in behind him, and you should go to that receiver. Vance Johnson was wide open in the middle. Third and five, Broncos trail by 14. Four-man rush. Elway steps up, and he'll run to the left side. He's got enough for the first down. A flag is also down on the other side of the field at the 45-yard line. Defense, 
number 46, added to the end of the run, first down. So the 11 yard gain will stand. Izell Jenkins, number 46, who had a first half interception, is guilty of the hold. Eagles defense have been playing so well the last few games. In the first four games, they gave up an average of 28 points per game. The last four, nine and a half per game. And they started running the football, and they started giving up less points. That's Ryan's whole point behind getting the running game going. Double tight end set, flags down. Mike Pitts. Whoa! Is that Keith Carts? Yes, it is. And Pitts. So the center and the defensive tackle get into it. There were flags thrown before that little altercation. There's Keith Carts out of California. Playing with a hearing loss, 60% of the hearing in his right ear because of an ear infection. Ball start, number 60. Five yards, still first down. Well, that's Gerald Perry, and that's not unusual. And the reason you hear the boos, last week against Seattle, he was whistled for six penalties. Four of them were accepted. Most of them were false starts. In the meantime, let's check in on Keith Carts. Carts 72, and Pitts going at it, and Pitts just finally takes Carts. And throws him to the ground, and Carr says, hey, wait a minute, that thing was whistled dead. What the heck are you doing? First and 15. Humphrey lines up behind John Elway. Ball at the 50. Draw play. Boy, it looked for a moment like that thing was going to really go. And then Seth Joyner and Byron Evans. That's why you're seeing Humphrey lined up in fullback, Vern. When you run draws like that, if you're going to run them up the middle, it's important you have a quick start running back, a guy that can hit there quickly because a hole against a great defense is only going to be there for just a short time. And Humphrey, with the great quickness and speed, he's best suited to run that play from the fullback position, and therefore that's why he's lined up there. Humphrey out. Steve Sewell comes into the lineup. Excellent receiver out of the backfield. Excellent receiver. Ian Brattner is split behind John Elway right now. Adjustments made by the Eagle defense, and Elway drops straight back. Looks deep across the middle. Has Johnson open, first down at the 26. Andre Waters with the hit. Johnson is lined up in the slot down, and he'll run the deep post in. Setting him up. Notice I said earlier, the post will eventually come there, but no one in the middle of zone coverage. And then Johnson, once again, Vern, once he got into the opening, he slowed down, giving Elway the target. Gain of 21, first down at the 25. 7.55 to go, third quarter. It's 21 to 7 to Philadelphia. Elway given time again. Diving ground made by Sewell at the 17. Here's a man who was a number one draft choice out of Oklahoma. Never quite cut it as a running back, and so they moved him to wide receiver. He's kind of a Keith Byers back, you uh -huh. know. Byers, we knew, was a running back at Ohio State. Sewell, we knew, was a wishbone back at Oklahoma. Sewell comes to Denver. They find out he can run pass routes and catch the ball, which is unusual coming from Oklahoma. So, therefore, they'll use him out of the backfield running and running routes, but they'll also flank him as they are right now. They'll take him out as a receiver. I'd throw the ball to him right now. On second down and three. Inside the 15, and Humphrey fights for another yard before Byron Evans can drag him down. But that's good enough for a first and ten. Well, we've seen counter trap right. Now we're going to see block back, block back, block back step. Then we're going to pull here, pull the tackle, and then there's the hole right up inside. Counter trap run by the Broncos. Good job. Waddell pulling, gets a big hole, and near clears out. An extra effort by Humphrey. Man, what a job. First down and 10 with 6.35 to go. It's 14 to 7, Eagles at the half. They extended that lead here in the third quarter. A 66-yard catch by Jimmy Giles. Now it's 21-7, but Denver threatens for the first down at the 13. Blitz. Elway. Let's go in the corner. Johnson.
it deep. Touchback. And the Eagles take over out at their own 20-yard line, first down and 10. Vance Johnson, fourth touchdown of the year when he was trying to make the transition from running back to wide receiver after playing at Arizona. He was in the East-West All-Star game. And his teammate there was Randall Cunningham from UNLV. Randall said, I'll try and help you out. I'll throw you a few balls in the All-Star game. He threw him 12 passes. Johnson made nine catches. Was drafted in the second round ahead of Randall Cunningham. They have since become very good friends. 24-yard line and a flag is down. series of downs. You always point to a certain series, and I believe now it's important that Denver stop Philadelphia and get the ball back. Right now. Let's see if it is Ron Heller. That's who we're looking at for 73. Holding 73. Still first down. He's got that look of who, me? Yeah. 14, Philadelphia trying to stay within a game or possibly tie the New York Giants. Screen pass, Tony. Ron Holmes misses the tackle. And then Tony is knocked down by a choir of orange-clad Denver Broncos. Cunningham, that time, threw the screen pass to the side of Simon Fletcher. Simon Fletcher will be coming from the outside to your right. He's coming full speed. Now he gets up. There's a screen in behind him, but a good job by Holmes, 90. Fletcher went outside for the blitz. Holmes comes out and picks up the back. Second down, 19, 18. of the year. That is the second for the Broncos of the game. Cunningham showing signs of frustration. Plum told us that one of the things that they won't do in this game because of the, for the defense that's run by the Broncos, we will not move our men around. We'll be not shifting because it has no effect whatsoever on their coverage. So what the Eagles are doing is just lining up their people and running the plays. Third and 25. the intended receiver it'll be fourth down what I tell you about the end zone it makes you throw everything quicker you say to yourself no safeties you say to yourself I can't step out of the end zone you say to yourself I've got I don't have enough time and you throw it too soon you throw it in the ground if you could just wait a second Williams was open could have made the big catch John Telchik is back with his heels shadowing the end line Man, how would you like to be him? They will allow him to punt it. Ken Bell, who's bobbled two of them, will have this one bounce. And it'll be down by the Eagles at the 39. Another flag flies. Two of them, as a matter of fact. Away from the ball at the 25-yard line. picked up no foul flag we picked up first down first down for the Denver Broncos at the 39 as we told you what a game coming up next Saturday on CBS undefeated Colorado against undefeated Nebraska Bill McCartney said yesterday this is the most important game in Colorado football history that's what they're talking about eight no eight no and you said earlier 
your big team is the Broncos, but you got to think the Buffaloes are big with Darren Hagan, the young quarterback who rushed for 107 yards yesterday, and Flanagan with 103 going up against Grabowski and Ken Clark of Nebraska. Hey, line them up, baby. Big time game. I like that stuff. That'll be in Boulder, and it'll also be on CBS next week. 21-14, third quarter, four and a half to go. Broncos trail. Play fake by Elway. Brown has it. And a 10-yard loss. Jerome Brown unimpeded. That is the sixth sack of John Elway. Said he has two moves. One's a little move to the inside. And what do you think the other one is? A little move to the outside. That's right. Jerome Brown, 99. Nothing fancy here. Man, he just blows by the center carts. No way in the world Elway had a chance to even throw the ball as Karch. Look at him. He throws his hands up, totally frustrated. Second down and 20. 4-10 to go, third quarter. Six sacks by the Eagles. They came in with 30, second in the lead. Draw play. Humphrey with a 42-yard line. Byron Evans again with the tackle. you on other score. Chicago ends its win streak or the losing streak. Green Bay ends Detroit in defeat. Cincinnati rolled over Tampa Bay today. Cleveland outlasted Houston 28-17. Pittsburgh knocks off Kansas City. Mike Webster starting center for the Kansas City Chiefs. And one eye he felt going back to Pittsburgh and playing against the guys. And the Cowboys stay winless through the first half of the year. Third down and 12. Elway, another rush. Mike Pitts has it. That's seven sacks. This is an injured offensive line and a very, very good Philadelphia defensive line. And the mismatch is showing. Well, it's showing now we're in the third quarter, and Elway's got to throw the football to get back in the game. And one of the things we'll have to look for now, Vern, is the dash series. The Elway taking the ball and sprinting out and getting away from a, a drop back pocket, getting outside and throwing on the run. There's Horan's punt. Williams lets it bounce. Oh, it does it again. Oh, no. That's the second time that Mike Horan has angled one out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. Bet, you know, on a low punt, Horan had a low punt. You get up there, you get under it, and you make the catch. Even if you fair catch it, you, you save yourself another eight yards. You know, now the team is, your team is backed up to the six-yard line, but Horan's a left-footed punter, and it does have a different spin, but that makes no difference. You ought to get up there and, and make the catch. Mike Horan, who spent two years punting for the Eagles, has been here since 86. And he pins the Eagles back inside the 10 again. They're at the six-yard line. 3.02 to go, third quarter. Robert Drummond, the only setback. They hand it to Byers has it. He was in there. Joining Drummond, and it's uh, a gain out to the eight-yard line. Yeah, you know, the Broncos have done an outstanding job from the Ever since the first quarter, there has been no running whatsoever by the Eagles. And now coming out, the only big play the Eagles have had is the 66-yard touchdown pass to Giles. And also, Cunningham has the dash series, the sprint-out series. So maybe, maybe the Eagles will use him on that. That touchdown pass came on play action, 66 yards to Jimmy Giles. Here's the dash series that Terry was talking about. Cunningham nailed it to two. Bumble. Still wrestling for the ball, and there has been no indication. Well, Cunningham lost the ball, but what may happen here if Denver has the ball? Yes! Greg Craigan comes up with it. It was Simon Fletcher who caused it. If you have to be concerned about a linebacker that can blitz and make sacks, it has to be Simon Fletcher as he leads his team with sacks coming all around. The dash series designed by the Eagles is to get Cunningham out. Fletcher comes in behind him, knocks 
knocks the ball out and recovered by Greg Cragen. 71 the nose tackle. First and goal, Denver. Simon Fletcher, who among his other talents, is ambidextrous, and he can write with either hand. He signs autographs with his left hand, and he signs checks with his right hand. He said that way they can't forge him. First and goal on the three. Play fake. Incomplete. Elway had a man wide open, but Seth Joyner was in his face. Oh, man, Seth Joyner. This was a touchdown all the way. Play action. You knew it was coming. I wanted to say play action in the flat wide open. I didn't have the guts to do it. But Joyner comes right in Elway's face, and Humphrey is wide open. Seth Joyner talking with Jim Tunney. Points off turnovers, 24 takeaways for the Broncos in 89 have equaled 74 points, tops in the league. Do it again. I don't think he can run up the middle. I don't think he can run outside. I think you have to play action and do it again. That's Sewell in motion. The toss, Humphrey. Hot short. It'll be third and goal from the two. You didn't like the play call. Well, it's so hard to run up the middle against great tackles. Jerome Brown and Pitt are great. Pitts are great tackles. It's so hard to run wide against a goal line defense because everyone is stunning and they have gap responsibilities. And it's very hard with linebackers and corners coming to get outside. So you play action. If you have to do it three times in a row, I guarantee you, you'll complete one out of three for a touchdown. Let's see if they go play action on third and goal from the two. 21-14 with 1.20 to go, third quarter. Sewell's in the backfield. They botch the play. This is Melvin Brown. Step on. No. Out of bounds at the one. Why Bratton? Why give it to a rookie who's having his first start? Why not Humphrey? Why not go motion? Why not cross your tight? Why not a lot of things? But why give it to a young man who doesn't have the speed of a Humphrey against a defense that's extremely quick and fast? Makes no sense to me. And now what does Dan Reeves do on fourth down? Does he squander the chance to tie this game and settle for the three? That apparently is what he will do. David Treadwell, who missed from 27 in regulation time last week and then made from 27 to win the game, will kick this one from... 18 yards away. Gary Kubiak will hold. But there has to be a feeling of opportunity lost here for the Denver Broncos with a first and goal at the three, and they settle for the field goal. Exactly, Vern. I can't agree with you more. You get an opportunity to score and tie the game up coming off of a turnover inside the five-yard line and have to settle for a field goal. Man, that, that is a win for the Eagles. That's not a win for the Broncos. Look, see, this is why you don't want to give it to a guy that hasn't started this year in a crucial game right off the bat, Elway and Bratton run into one another. So the timing, obviously, isn't there. The normal fullback, I believe, is a young man. Jeff that, Alexander. Yeah, Alexander, who is a great blocker, who has a bad ankle right now, and he's out for a couple of weeks. But, gosh, why give it to Bratton? Doesn't mean Bratton can't run the ball. He's just that he's a rookie, hasn't been exposed to this kind of pressure. First time to start. Hey. I just totally disagree with it. And as a result, Treadwell kicks the field goal from 18 yards, but instead of tying it up at 21-all, it's a 21-17 game. And, of course, Philadelphia really escaped something. And, and as you said, Terry, defensively for the first two plays, they played very well. They had the break on, on the third down play. Mark Higgs is back to return it with Heath Sherman. And we're going to dodge a snowstorm, I do believe. It was supposed to be two to four inches today, but the sun is out and about to set. It's turned into a gorgeous day. There they crossed out. And Sherman finally picks it up. And is down at the 17. Next Sunday on CBS, NFL action beginning with the NFL today live at 12.30 Eastern. And many of you will see the Rams take on Minnesota. Chicago will be at Green Bay or Detroit at Houston. And then later on that night, uh, that afternoon, Terry and I will be in Phoenix as the Giants take on Phoenix. Others of you will watch as Philadelphia goes to San Diego. And, of course, it all begins with Irv and Dick and Brent and Will, the NFL today at 1230 Eastern. Field position in this half. The Eagles have averaged starting at their own 16. They're at the 17 right now. Play action again. Cunningham gets by Fletcher. Flag is down. We'll have holding. And Cunningham slides to a stop. Scrambling by a quarterback doesn't affect zone defenses like
can affect man defenses. Man defenses, everyone is run off, and when Cunningham gets outside the pocket, he can run forever, but against zones, there are linebackers and corners coming back. They don't get out of their area, and it's easier to make the tackle. This will be tripping instead of holding. During the run, number 78, tripping, tripping, 10 yards. Still first down. That's Matt Darwin, the left tackle. Now everything's going bad. Everything that can possibly happen to the Eagles is happening. Terry, you you played here, what, I think twice with Pittsburgh? Yep. Two how, times. How tough is this stadium with the crowd and the environment? Well, this is, if, if I were a Bronco fan, I, I can understand why it's so easy for them to win here. This is a hard stadium to come in and beat the Broncos. These fans are loud. It's hard to hear. And as you can see, the sidelines are not very far from the bleachers, and they can give you an earful just real easy. First and 18. Cunningham to Byers. Slips out of one tackle and then is down at the 15-yard line with 30 seconds to go third quarter. Randall Cunningham with very modest numbers now. 7 of 11. 8 of 12, rather. And 95 yards, but 66 of those came on a third quarter touchdown pass to Jimmy Giles. Dan Reeves' team has not led in this game. They fell behind 14-0. It was 14-7 at the half. And they were down 21-7. And it is now 21-17. That's the end of the third quarter. With our score, the Philadelphia Eagles 21, the Denver Broncos 17. We now pause for a word from your local station. This is is completely the Gillette Afro Plus system and Gillette Foamy, together the best a man can get. And by Subaru, we built our reputation by building a better car. We begin the fourth quarter from Denver, Colorado, with the Broncos trailing the Philadelphia Eagles 21-17. Carl Mecklenburg anchors his Bronco defense as the Eagles come out with a second down and 12. Vern Lundquist and Terry Bradshaw. Cunningham back. Has time and comes to his left. He'll run to the 20 and down at the 25-yard line. Just gets under the uh, tackle of Dennis Smith, number 49. So Randall, who had a 24-yard scamper in the first quarter to help set up the first touchdown, has now rushed four times for 46 yards. I don't think this is what Cunningham wants to do, and I don't. You know, I don't think you blame him. No, I don't. I really don't. I. Uh, this offense with Quick out and with Jackson out is just, it's just not the offense. And I understand the reason, but the way the things have been. No motion by the offense whatsoever. Very, very simple, very easy to understand. Third and one. It'll be first and ten, Keith Byers. It was Byers who ignited that first drive by the Eagles quite some time ago, almost uh, two and a half hours ago. Keith Byers, who previous high for the season was 41 yards in a single game, now has... 90 yards on 18 carries. Most of that, though, came in that first quarter yeah, drive. I would, I would say 80 yards of the 90 that Byers got was, he, and he got most of that. I think he had, what, 71 in the first quarter alone. Right. And uh, so Byers having a big game, but not being called on since the first quarter, really. Eagles rushed for 139 yards in the first quarter. Not that effective since. Straight drop back by Cunningham. Goes left. Oh, Dennis Smith almost had it. And Smith, who's having a Pro Bowl year, would have cinched the spot with that one because he would have scored. Cannot believe it. I want to show you something, Vern. The thing that is so hard about this defense, these are linebackers, and out here is a safety. And when I draw, what I'm drawing is a line, and these gentlemen will go right there and settle, and they don't care who you are or what you're doing. They're not about to go any deeper, any issue. Look at them, just settle right there. Look on the outside at the corner, just settling right there. They're saying, fine, we got this area. You go somewhere else with it. Dennis Smith, and on second down, they stuck Keith Byers. It, it, it's a defense that Wade Phillips brought in. He said it's his defense that he learned from his father. Said, uh, you know, he didn't, he did incorporate some of the techniques that he learned from Buddy Ryan, but this is really his defense. And he's very proud of what they've accomplished, but he said, we don't make many mistakes. They don't make many mistakes. They practice everything. It's a very simple, not complicated. He said, this year we're going to, our primary responsibility is stop the run. And then number two, we're going to go to play action. We'll stop that. Number three, we're going to go into the nickel. We're going to stop that. We're just going to take it one piece at a time. Third and ten, here comes the blitz. Cunningham across the middle. Incomplete, it'll be a punt. Ron Johnson, the 
intended receiver. Excellent pass by Cunningham. Johnson has to make those catches. Now you get into the head of Cunningham. He says, hey, when I finally do throw the ball down the field and I put it there, make the catches, fellas. That's the only way I'm going to build my confidence in you. You got to make those catches. Quick would have made that catch, and I'm sure that's what Randall's thinking. Greg Cragen, who had to sit out a couple of games with an injury, is on the bench now, the nose tackle. Ken Bell, who is, uh, he's been an adventure back there returning punts. He's bottled two of them. This one is returnable. And he's got it. Robert Drummond has him at the 37-yard line. That's a 45-yard punt. And 13 on the return. Buddy Ryan's Eagles have come west to the Rockies. They lead Dan Reeves and the Broncos 21-17. we've been telling you how the four-wheel drive Subaru helps the U.S. ski team get to their events early. Yet at the 1989 World Championships, the U.S. team was not the first to arrive. The Norwegians beat us, the French beat us, as did the Italians and the Swedes. How'd they do it? That was the year we lent them all a Subaru. It's 32 degrees. And Jan Trumpeter is learning all about her antifreeze. The hard way. What is this happening to me? Don't push your luck. Guarantee it with Advanced Formula Prestone. Those catches. It's 
So when I threw it to him, I automatically thought that they would make him. I didn't worry about it. Jackson made a great catch, but it starts with pass protection. Why did Elway have all this time? Look at what happened. Sewell now is staying inside. No backs are out. And now they actually have five linemen, one tight end, and a running back staying in, helping Elway. Reggie White lines up over Keith Kortz on this first down play. An eight-man front, essentially. Now the corner's back off. Elway with play action. Goes left side for Mobley. It's incomplete. Jerome Brown got to John Elway. He has been sacked six times already. And he and Simmons got him. Mobley that time, one of the keys to throw into a tight end is that the tight end has to have the ability to come off the ball and get open. Mobley is held up by Andre Waters, and therefore he disrupts the entire passing route of the tight end. That's number 20, Waters. If you give a tight end freedom to get off the line of scrimmage, then you have better opportunities to complete them. But if you jam him, it slows down everything. Second down and 10. And a blitz look. Now let's see if they jumped offside or were drawn off. Elway deep for Johnson. If the play stands, it's a first down at the 17. Now check the flag. It appeared Seth Joyner came across the line. Reggie White's going crazy, so you got to know it's against the Eagles. He said it was kind. First down. 33-yard game. One of the keys to do if you're a quarterback and a veteran is to have longer cadence and change it up. Excellent coverage this time. Eric Allen, 21, the ball floats, and now it's anyone's ball. Excellent job by Johnson, Vance Johnson. He timed the jump perfectly and made the catch. Gain of 33, first down at the 18. Broncos have never led. We've got 10.42 to go, and they have a chance to get their first lead of the game. And, and Elway now has the opportunity with this offense to make audibles at the line of scrimmage regardless of a run or a pass is called. In the, back, in the past, he did not. He was hit as he lets it go, and it's incomplete in the end zone. Clyde Simmons got to John Ilway. So many rules when you look at in the grass rule, uh, Vern. It, it do, does the defensive player have the quarterback? Has he stopped him? Are his arms wrapped around him? Well, Clyde Simmons comes in from the backside. Elway is sitting there. There's the leg, and then there's the throw, and that's one leg, two hands on one leg, and that's all one motion, so I can understand that not being an in-the-grass rule, but later on that might be called. <laughs> Who knows? Second and 10, 21-17. Ball at the 18. Split backs behind John Elway. And as Terry said, he can audible now where he couldn't before. Play fake. They adjust the route. Elway throws it away. It'll be third and ten. Smart decision by Elway. He's growing up. He's maturing. He understands this game. This area that he's in is a quick passing area. What I mean by that is that there's not much room. You don't have enough room to run a receiver and clear out a safety. You don't have enough room to cross a lot of people and wait till they go all the way across the line of scrimmage. So therefore, you have to set up and make a quick decision and unload the football quickly. And this is one reason why that pass didn't work. Elway got outside. Everything was disrupted, threw it away. Third and 10, Johnson is in a slot to the right side. Shotgun formation. Elway. He'll run it. Chase from behind. Slides down. First and goal.
John Elway. The fake to the back and the outside man blitzes. If he blitzes, throw it to the back. If he pulls off, then you throw it to the tight end. Notice that no one is in the back out in the flat to cover that man. His man blitz, and that makes the safety have to come all the way over to make the coverage impossible to do. Excellent call. That is Melvin Bratton's first touchdown as a pro. Melvin Bratton injured on New Year's Day in 1987. Serious injury. Had to sit out two years of football. Was drafted by Miami in the sixth round a year ago, but couldn't reach agreement and didn't play. Was drafted by the Broncos in the seventh round this year. And he's getting his first start today. Had a bobble on third and goal a while ago, but got the touchdown to put Denver ahead just a moment ago. Gizmo Williams. Out of bounds at the 31-yard line. They might mark it out at the 30. Okay. What right. Ryan said, that when we need our offense, I'm not worried about it. It's there and it comes through. I'm a firm believer in that you just can't turn a switch on a great offense and say, all right, go out and pass for 80 yards and win the football game. That's not easily done. That's a lot of pressure on Rendell Cunningham. And against a defense that's designed to take away the big play, he is now going to be forced more than ever to hold his patience, be very conservative, take what they give him, the Broncos that is, and then move the ball down the field in pieces. Cunningham, 8 of 14 for 95 yards. Tosses to Mark Higgs. Oh, bumped backwards. This is a Denver defense that was ripped on the ground in the first quarter, but has solidified in the last two and a half quarters. I, I go back to what Carl Mecklenburg said when he said, I, they used to design this defense always for a way to get me open, for me to make the big play. But in the Wade Phillips defense, I, can, I'm, I am not the main man. It's Simon Fletcher, it's Cragen, it's Holmes, it's everyone now. Cunningham with pressure. Relief foul pass to Heath Sherman. Simon Fletcher knocks him down. Ron Holmes and Michael Brooks just about got to Randall Cunningham in time. See what's happened? Where are the seams? Where are the deep routes? They're not there because this isn't man coverage. This is those short zones. It's five short. It's three linebackers dropping off, and it's two corners laying to the outside. And then the switch up is they'll drop a corner off and bring a safety up, give it a different look, but it's still five short, three deep. Three wide receivers are in. Shotgun formation, two deep zone by the Denver Broncos. Cunningham finds a man, and then it's incomplete. Chris Carter could not hang on. Fourth down. Tough to go to the passing game when you haven't had it there all day long. You know what I can equate it with? It's like Oklahoma getting behind Nebraska with three minutes left and having to start throwing the football. It just doesn't work, folks. As great as Cunningham is, it just doesn't work. Now Tilchik will punt with 7.46 to go. Ken Bell back to wait at the 25-yard line. Short punt. Bell, did it hit one of the receivers? Did it hit a Bronco? No, the officials are saying no. They're arguing. Did it hit a Bronco? They're, they're saying it hit Der Darren uh, Carrington, number 29. William Frizzell thought for sure it hit one of the Broncos. They're going to give it to Philadelphia. You cannot advance a muff. You cannot advance a muff. That apparently is going to be ruled a muff. There's the bounce. The ball comes up. The punt, the punt was touched by Denver. Recovered by Philadelphia. No advance is possible, but first down. right in the chest. It went down alertly. The Eagles recovered it. The Volvo 240 has built a reputation for surviving accidents. And we at Subaru have always been impressed. The crowd still trying to sort this out. His rookie, Darren Carrington, had the ball touch him. They are still looking at a replay, by the way. And let's go back and look again. The play is being reviewed. Darren Carrington.
Washington is the rookie wearing number 29. And it's a little tough to see against the background of all that uh, paper on the field. But there, apparently, it hit him in the shoulder, Gary. You can see his hands. Notice the reflex by his arms when he gets back there. You can see the reflex, which leads you to believe that Carrington did indeed touch the ball. Now, there's the punt, one of those wobblers. Notice that Bell gets out of the way, 35. Carrington, Carrington looks up, and I don't know if the ball bounced up and hits him in the stomach, hits him on the legs, or what, because our replay, we can't really tell. Upon review, the play stands as called, first down. Well, that's an example of inconclusive evidence to overturn the play. I mean, you've got to allow the officials to officiate. They called it. There wasn't evidence to overrule it. And as a result, because you cannot advance them up, the Eagles are having the ball, and Keith Jackson is in the lineup. Play fake. Cunningham drops at the 32. Welcome, those of you who've been watching the Jets and the San Francisco 49ers, where San Francisco defeated New York 23 to 10. We have 7.30 remaining in this ball game, and the Denver Broncos have just taken the lead over the Philadelphia Eagles 24-21. However, having held the Philadelphia Eagles on downs and forcing them to punt, one of the Broncos inadvertently touched the ball, so the Eagles took over after the punt at the 31-yard line. They now have a second down after a sack. Here's Randall Cunningham rolling right. Goes deep, incomplete. It'll be third down. Again, just to bring you up to date, midway through the fourth quarter, Denver, which had trailed by 21 to seven at one point, came back to go on top. They lead it by three right now. Philadelphia went on top seven nothing in the first quarter, a 16 yard run by Byers, then Cunningham hit Carter to make it 14 to nothing. In the second quarter, John Elway shaved the margin in half, 14 to seven. That's where it stood at halftime. Philadelphia then got a 66 yard pass to Jimmy Giles, 21 to seven. Elway countered to make it 21-14. Treadwell's field goal made it 21-17. Bratton just caught a four-yard touchdown pass. That's where we are. Now, third and 18. Flags down. Cunningham, Garrity. If the play stands, it's a first down at the 11. Check the infraction. Side. Defense. Decline. First down. That is a gain of 21 yards to Greg Garrity. And a huge play for the Philadelphia Eagles. They were just held on downs, had to punt, but Darren Carrington, a rookie who was downfield to help the return man, had the ball bounce off his heel. William Frizzell covered it for the Eagles. And they took over. And here we are with the first down and 10 at the 11. We're here at Mile High Stadium in Denver where the score is 24-21 Denver. We'd like to remind our audience that 60 minutes will air in its entirety immediately following the game, except on the West Coast. On first down, Keith Byers inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. For 21 Philadelphia they had a 21 to 7 lead Denver came back and took the lead in this quarter on a play action pass from Elway to Melvin Bratton to make it 24 21 but now the Eagles threaten to go back on top with the second down six minutes to go in the ball game Keith Jackson is in the lineup Cunningham back Keith Byers stopped at the one you on other scores the Raiders leading Seattle leads San Diego and our score is 24 21 this should be a first down now for Philadelphia Vern Lundquist and Terry Bradshaw from mile high and what a crazy turn of events Terry here in the fourth quarter with this muff by Denver that gave possession once again to Philadelphia yeah, and then you Darren Carrington the young man was actually blocking. He wasn't. He was trying to help his man out. And normally, when you have two people back receiving a punt, one or the other will wave the other one off, or call, or holler out some type of name that will say, "Get away from the ball." But Carrington evidently received no message. The ball bounced up, 
and gives new life to the Eagles. And today they primarily have done it by running. But when Cunningham has thrown, he has thrown for touchdowns. First and goal from the one. David Little in motion. Touchdown, Philadelphia, Keith Myers.
place. They can throw off balance and be just as effective as most quarterbacks are when they set stride. That time Elway outside, look, across his body, he's done it so many times, it's only natural. And then Sewell, the guy we've talked about, who's equally dangerous as a receiver as well as a running back. Brazell forces him out of bounds. First down at the 45, 4.17 to go. Jackson splits out wide right. Mobley starts in motion. They hand it off to Humphrey. And he is stuck as he gets to the 43. Elsewhere around the National Football League, as we reach the midway point, we'll bring you up to date on what else happened today. The Rams lose to Chicago, 20 to 10, the final there. Green Bay goes into overtime as Don Mikowski had a big day. Cincinnati just uh, rolled over Tampa Bay. Cleveland defeated Houston. And Pittsburgh ousted Kansas City. Buffalo over Miami, 31-17. Seven lead. John Elway and the Broncos came back to take the lead of 
But then a muff on a punt recovered by William Frizzell led to a Keith Byers touchdown and our current score of 28-24. And now the Eagles with a third down and 13, 234 remaining in the ballgame. And here they come. Garrity comes to the left. Keith Jackson in the ballgame. He is tight to the right side. first down. Now, did he get it? The spot is at the 41 or just outside of it. And Jim Tunney calls for the chain. Randall had a 24-yard scamper in the first quarter that's set up a touchdown. series of downs with only two minutes remaining here at Mile High Stadium. Run by Randall Cunningham has just given the Eagles a fresh set of downs with a first down at the 41-yard line as they hold on to a 28-24 to 24 lead. Don't forget, 60 minutes coming up next, except on the West Coast. Fires to the 41. And now Denver will use one of its timeouts. 154 to go in the ball game. There is Keith Kartz. Gone the distance in center for the Broncos today, who are on the verge of falling to 6-2 and two at the halfway break. Dan Reeves' team came in today with a three-game edge in the division. And the Raiders continue to roll over Washington. Seattle leading San Diego 10-7. Randall Cunningham. Eagles came out and ran the ball 96 yards in 13 plays to open the ball game. And Cunningham with that very conservative offense, five of seven for 22 at the halftime break. John Elway has been picked off three times today as this Philadelphia team has uh, converted turnovers into scoring opportunities. Western Division opponents. They came in, as we said, 6-1 and one, and with a three-game cushion at the halfway point. And they have been all but unbeatable here at home, 4-0 and oh this year. And on the verge of losing their first of the season. Seattle 4-4, and four and four, rather. And that is a final. Seattle did defeat San Diego, so that's a, a current standing. Now Seattle at 4-4. Four and four. The Raiders leading the Washington Redskins. If they hold on, they'll go to 4-4. Four and four. Kansas City at 3-5, and five, and San Diego at 2-6. and six. So much more so, Terry, than Philadelphia. Denver could afford to, to lose one. They could afford one, but on the other side of it, you, they did want to lose one. And if you look at Philadelphia at 5-2, going to 6-2, if they can hold on here, hey, that's got a football buddy Ryan wanted to play. And the thing he's seeing is he's seeing that his running game is coming around. And it does get cold in Philadelphia. Third and six, Cunningham, deep right side. Chris Carter, flag down. Wyman Henderson. All he had to do was turn his head around and the flag would have been picked up. But by not turning his head around. Offense, the
80. This is Carter. Let's see what the flag is. I thought it would be on Henderson. There's the, the head of Oh, there's the Henderson's head. That's coming around, and the left arm of Carter came up. The ref saw the arm of Carter and called him for pushing off. Once again, stride for stride. It wasn't going to be completed. But sitting right back there, the bag does. He saw it. There's the flag. Not much of an effort. I mean, that's looking for something to throw a flag on there. And the penalty will be declined, and the Broncos will, will take the play and have at least one more shot now as John Kelchick comes on. Ken Bell drifts back 141 to go in the ballgame. 28-24. Fourth down. He'll set formations, and he'll call two plays in the huddle. If the pass, the second pass is com complete, he does not have a timeout, so he'll have to hurry the lineman up to the line of scrimmage, take the snap, and then throw the ball down to kill the clock. CBS is Charles H. Milton III. Our game today produced by David Michaels and directed by Andy Kindle, the executive producer of CBS Sports. Ted Shaker. 28-24. 1.27 to go. Now you kill the clock. Now you set them. 
will be second down. Third down, rather. Third and 10, the 39, with 37 seconds to go. Jeff Fisher, the 31-year-old defensive coordinator, stands in front of Buddy Ryan. Now what on third and 10? Once again, the, the area that you attack, the area that's most vulnerable is the inside route, sir. Even on man coverage, because you run away from people by coming to the inside. So look for the Eagles to drop back, possibly play zone. Make Elway forces completions inside. If he gets them outside, it stops the clock. In the end zone, Sewell. Incomplete. And he was there for a fraction of a second. See, Sewell doesn't, Sewell doesn't grab as much attention as, say, a Jackson or a Johnson or a Young. But a running back running down the middle doesn't quite grab your fancy. But Sewell does come open. That pass very easily could have been intercepted, but there's the effort by the safety. I can't see the number there, Vern. That's Waters, Andre 20. Waters. Andre Waters. Heck of a play by Waters because it looked as though Sewell had made the, made the catch. Waters knocked it out. Fourth and 10. And no timeouts left. Six and two, barring something extraordinary. And Denver falls to six and two and sees their lead in the AFC West reduced to two games. They are looking at a replay, we are told. Upon review, the play stands. Recovered fumble, first down. Eagles, who will leave here tonight and go to San Diego, where they take on the uh, Chargers next week, have come from behind after leading most of the game. And they lead it right now 28-24, and Denver cannot stop the clock. That'll do it. The Eagles with a strong ground game in the first half and a big pass play, but the biggest play of all was a muff of a punch recovered by William Frizzell that led to a go-ahead touchdown, and then Philadelphia hung on for a four-point edge. Back in a moment. Performance. For some people, it's more than a passion. It's a way of life. Well, for all those people for whom good enough just isn't good enough, there's speed stick antiperspirant. Nothing is wider. Nothing glides on drier. Nothing gives you all-day protection in a bigger way. All-day performance that's hard to beat. If you're going to give 110%, your antiperspirant should give 110% too. Speed Stick, the white stick. By Menon. Radio Shack has the computer you need for home, office at home, or business. And now you can save $300 on either of our two most powerful Tandy 1000 PC compatible computers. They're easy to use for your whole family, yet powerful enough for business. Discover the easy to use DeskMate difference, where the same simple graphics guide you through word processing, spreadsheets, and more. Take advantage of the savings on two great Tandy 1000 computers from $599. Only at Radio Shack, the technology store. For Terry Bradshaw, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from Mile High Stadium in Denver where the final score was Philadelphia 28 and the Denver Broncos 24. You've been watching CBS Sports Coverage of the National Football League. In 13 cities and 10 countries across the Pacific, they're playing our song. United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve halfway around the world. Come fly the friendly skies. When you look for champions, you look to CBS Sports. Wednesday, 
I want a case. Be my guest. Is Derek in over his head? You think I'm being too tough on him? And how far will Jake go to help him? Oh, my Jake God. Jake and the Fat Man. <laughs> this is CBS. Announcing a new generation of owner satisfaction. We're so sure you'll love your new Oldsmobile. We'll let you return it within 30 days or 1,500 miles if you don't. Who else does that? Unlike some warranties, Oldsmobile's covers just one part. This is the part. Oldsmobile now offers roadside assistance around the clock, even in places where there aren't any clocks. The Oldsmobile 